In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you convert a 1D model into a 2D model by adding a 2D mesh to the surface of the catchment. We start by using a polygon draw tool to mark out the area we wish to cover with our 2D zone. Use the tool from the top of the menu bar and draw around. In this particular case, we're using the outline of an existing polygon, which is marking the drainage study area for the catchment. As we follow around, you'll notice as we hit the vertices of the existing polygon, we have the snap tool bringing this directly online with existing points. Give the new zone a name and change the type of the polygon from a basic polygon to a 2D zone. The zone will be selected initially and over on the left hand side we will see the parameters relating to the 2D area. The software has already calculated that the area of the catchment is just over 27 hectares and has put in the default values of 100 meter triangles as the maximum size and a smallest element size of 25 meters. The user has the ability to change these at will so we could reduce the smallest triangle size down to 10 square meters. We could also adjust the setting for the boundary of the polygon which at the moment is defined to be a dry a vertical wall by default but we can set it so that it's normal condition any flows reaching the boundary will simply go over the edge of that boundary and the depth calculated will be the normal depth for the flow rate at that edge of the boundary with everything defined we can simply select our 2d zone and then using the menu uh, model menu at the top of the geo plan select meshing and mesh 2d zone we're given the option at this point to include into the mesh any voids that we may require, any break lines that we may require, and any walls that we may require. For this tutorial, we're doing a very basic mesh, so we're not going to include any of those structures. We do, however, need the LiDAR data, which in this case has already been pulled from the database. Now we just need to press OK. The final prompt is the software asking where within the network of workgroup machines we wish to generate the mesh. By default the mesh can be generated on this computer. However we have the option of generating the mesh on any computer within the workgroup or specifically defining which computer within the workgroup we would like to use for the task. In this particular case we're going to ask to use this particular machine. Clicking it from the list will bring it up and show where it's going to be done. The software will control the usage of any resources on that PC, such as the number of cores or the number of processors. And we want the mesh to be created as soon as possible. The final step is simply to press OK. You'll notice in the lower half of the screen now, we have a dialogue informing us of what is happening. So in this particular case, the data relating to that meshing process is being uploaded to the machine shown in this particular dialogue here. Depending on the network speed and depending on the amount of data being uploaded, this process might happen quite quickly or there might be a short delay while the information is moved up to the new server. Once the upload process is complete, the mesh will be generated and then the resulting mesh will be downloaded back onto the computer. And the indicator in the bottom right hand corner of the screen will indicate that that process is complete and we will see in the control dialog that the mesh is now ready to load. By using the hyperlink associated with the mesh ready message, we can open the load dialog and initially have a look at the log of the mesh that's been generated. This is where we'd look for any particular problems in the mesh, any warning messages or any error messages. As you can see in this particular case, there are no warnings and we have generated just over 4000 elements in our 2D mesh. Given that we're happy with that process, we can now load the mesh into our network model and close the dialog. And you will now see that the mesh has been generated and we can see the classic triangular mesh covering the surface area that we originally marked out with our 2D zone. We're now ready to validate the model and move to simulation. That completes this particular tutorial where we've been adding a 2D zone to a model and meshing it using a remote offline meshing agent within one of the computers within the workgroup.